A drug pusher experiences hell. I want to relate my testimony from my adolescence. I congregate in a church. I spent a lot of time in this church. I observed all the commandments of this ministry. I fulfilled the doctrine of diet. It is a list of things I could not do. When I grew older, I lost several jobs. My church did not allow me to work on Saturday. I was depressed. My family at the time was very poor and lived in a poor neighborhood. It was not easy looking for a job that did not require work on Saturdays. I missed many opportunities because of these things. I went to a life of crime. I began to use various types of drugs with Diego and my friend from school. Diego entered the trafficking of drugs. Diego came from a high class family and had no need to enter this work. I left my house. I lived in the city of San Pedro Sula. Diego went with me. Together we got into the drug trafficking and each one rented a house to live in. I made several friends there. I met dangerous people. I became friends with Armando, the boy drug addict. He lost his father in an accident and his mother was without financial support. She gave him to the orphanage when he was seven years old. When he was 10 years old, he ran away from the orphanage and he had been living alone for 14 years without being in a family. I called him to live with me and help me pay the rent. I made friends with the drug trafficking manager who ran that neighborhood. He called himself a Maori. I made a lot of money for him, because of that he gave me the position of manager. He went to look after other cities and left me administering this city. Everything that happened there I had passed to him. With the years passed, I started to earn a lot of money. I sent a part of the money for my family in Integocetalpa. My mother asked how I made so much money. I said that I was a sales manager, but I never said I was in drug trafficking. The drug spot where I was managing was coveted by other drug traffickers. A Maori called me and said he would be sending a guy to help me to protect that territory. This guy was very dangerous, one of the men who killed for money. That man had killed more than 15 people that year alone, 11 men and 4 women were his victims. His name was Guido. He knew I was the manager of that point. One day Guido was sitting at the table with a gun in his hand. He was the only one armed there. When I went outside, seven armed men barged into the house where they were counting money from the box. Guido and the three guys were surprised and received several shots and died at that time. I listened when those men broke into the door of the house to murder those men. I ran off and the seven men were following me. Soon my partners discovered that I was on the run. They gave me cover. There was a shooting. Two men who were following me died. That was the first escape God gave me. After that incident, I wanted to abandon the drug trafficking. My boss Amaury said that life is not only to make money. It had the bad side of things and that I was responsible for the profit from that point, which included killing people who attack us and who owe us money. It would draw attention from the authorities. I had no other profession or training to turn to give up the trafficking. Either I make more money or I would live a simple life without any comfort. I accepted the proposal. Satan knows our weak point. He does everything to arrest us for the great work that the Lord has in our lives. After these things, it only takes a little time before a reckoning takes place. I was changed. I was no longer the same person. I got a gun with four men. We raided several houses at dawn to settle the accounts with the addicts who did not pay. That day we went into five houses and killed all who did not pay their debts. All those who harmed the prophet were dead. One day some men and I slaughtered four people. I no longer felt pity for their lives. I killed a dead addict, she left behind two orphaned children. That day she begged me not to kill her. She said she would find a way to pay off her debt. She said, do not kill me for the sake of my children. I had no mercy and I executed her. She did not owe that much, but I wanted to get the attention of my boss. Killing that woman was a matter of my honor, it was no longer about the money. I wanted to gain respect and be feared so that the addicts would feel fear and not give more damage to us. After that slaughter, I thought the addicts would never dare to have overdue debts. I wanted to protect myself from my enemies. I paid a woman to put a spell on my body so that my enemies would never harm me. I got a call from a Maori saying that Diego had a big debt. His parents were able to pay as they have the money, but they would not pay their son's debt anymore. They were tired of paying his drug bills. That's why Diego was planning to go to another country. 
Diego was the boy who studied with me and came to live with me in San Pedro Sula. We were from Tegucigalpa. I talked to Diego and I gave him a week to pay. Diego said, we are friends, you understand me, you know my situation. I said, Diego, do not confuse friendship with work, you know that I fulfill orders. After that conversation, I had some guys to keep an eye on him for a week. If he did not pay, he would run, and that's what happened. I had no choice. The devil was setting me up and he knew my weaknesses. Armando always paid his debts. He lived in the same house as I in another room. He helped me pay the bills. He always paid his debts in my hands. One day the company sent him away because he had beaten his boss. He owed money for drugs and his bill was high. I knew he paid on time, but at that moment he had no money. A few months passed, he could not get a job. The devil had used him to assault his boss and now he was closing the doors so he would not pay his debts. Satan was plotting to take his soul. The law was death for all those who do not pay. I considered Armando as my brother. I had never been disappointed. I received a call to kill him. I was sad. That was a fidelity test. The order was for me to kill him with my own hands. I lived in the same house with him. I thought it would be easy until one day I took the gun and pointed it at him. I did not have the courage. I told him to go away. He packed his suitcase and left. I did not go to work at my post. I had broken the order to kill him that day. Days later a Maori came to my house and said, you disappoint me. I expected more from you. I increased your salary. I spoke well of you to my bosses and you betray me. I took money from my pocket and paid Armando's bill and told him to look for another man to take my place. I do not want to be part of this drug trafficking anymore. A few days I was on the street. A Maori pointed his gun at me and said that traitors like me should not live. I started to run, he shot and hit my shoulder and I ran. A Maori was not alone, he had many men with him. That day they had decreed my death. I could not escape. Someone called the police. Three policemen and five of the traffickers died, one of them was a Maori. Psalm 105, 15 Do not touch my anointed ones and do not mistreat my prophets. He only died because he would rise against my life. Satan was using this man to gain my soul. Money was offered for me to get caught in a crime and the devil to take my soul. I was taken to the hospital. They took the bullet from my shoulder. Someone made the complaint to the police station saying that I was the manager of a drug spot. I had already left. There was no way that I would go from hospital to prison. A week later one of Amaury's friends sent a letter to my cartel and told them all about my betrayal. I was stabbed inside my cartel. I was stabbed five times. If the policeman had not interfered, my situation would have been worse. I was hospitalized. I was seriously injured. I was breathing in the device, my vital signs were slowly ebbing away. My family noticed that I did not send any more money or call. They were worried and they traveled to Sao Pedro Sula. They received the news that I was hospitalized. Then they discovered all my lie that I was involved in drug trafficking. While in that hospital bed, a split occurred between my body and my soul and both separated. I descended at high speed. I fell into a dark place where there is no light, only darkness, and heard screams, groaning, and teeth grinding. I had no idea what place it was. A horrible monster threw a chain on my wrists and dragged me like an animal. I came close to a black throne because it was dark. I knew it was Satan. I was from a church that spoke of him. I was introduced to him. When he opened a book my name was written. Satan laughed and said, I was waiting for you, welcome. That demon dragged me and threw me into a red lake. He told me, a killer's place is in the lake of blood. When he threw me it was very hot. Toxic smell of sulfur choked me, and my air was gone. I felt the heat, great ardor of that fire. I felt thirst. I was consumed by that lake of boiling blood. I sank into that red lake. I felt pain. It seemed that I would die, but no, my suffering did not end. I asked for death in a place where one exists forever in suffering in that deplorable prison. I tried to get out of there, but something was pulling me back into the red lake. I would keep trying until I arrived in the dry area, but a force threw me into the middle of that lake that burned like acid. I was tired of swimming. It was the end for me. There was no way out. There were many people there with me trying to escape but our efforts were in vain. There was no escape, 
no escape. Those who fell in that place, there is no hope. There is no absolution for the prisoners. There is only the condemnation for the lake of fire at the last judgment. I was in a dead church a long time ago that said there is no hell. This was the teaching of the deceiver Satan who wants no one to know that hell exists to bring as many as possible to this place. I had believed in the doctrine of the deceit of this false church that hides the reality of hell but now I am proof of the existence of this place and was worthy of that place. All the evil that I had done was alive in my mind. It was what tormented me, beyond all suffering, I suffered psychological torments. I regretted, but it was of no use since it was too late for me. I wanted to go back, start doing everything that pleases God, but it ended. My family congregated in a serious church. They did prayer campaigns. In that hospital, I was already dead. The doctors wanted to turn off the appliances. My mother said I could not die. God had promised her that I would rise as a man of God to do the work. She would not accept my death. I was in a place in hell where bloodthirsty men were sentenced to suffer. I saw an angel come down to me and take my hand and I was pulled from that place. The angel said, you have received another opportunity. The work that God has in your life is great. It was necessary for me to go through this so that you no longer deviate from the path of truth. The angel took me in a place where I could see the people I had killed. They looked at me with a lot of hatred. I could see some putting the blame on me. The woman I had killed and left two children insulted me and said, you ruined my life, look where you have sent me. You deserve this place. I went to a place where I saw Diego burning in the fire. He looked at me and cried. I also cried. I felt guilty for him being there. I thought to myself, I was an instrument of Satan to bring these people to these places. I will never hurt anyone else. I will not gain more souls for the devil. Now the angel of the Lord has taken me to a place near the lake of fire, apart far from souls. We stood in a long distance. We could not get too close, because the suction power of that place is so terrible that even the demons are afraid and passed away. You could hear that lake of fire boil and its smoke rising up. That lake had no end. It fits seven of our planets inside that lake. The angel told me, all these souls that you have seen today, will be resurrected and will be thrown into this lake together with Satan and his angels. All these souls will receive their physical bodies. They will be complete as they were created and born. It is right for them to receive their bodies before they are sentenced. The angel and I returned to earth, my breath came back and my eyes opened. My parents were praying for me along with the brothers. I was hospitalized for more than a week, but I had died two days. My mother struggled not to allow my body to be taken away. When I woke up, my parents along with the brothers began to glorify God. The doctors heard a noise. They entered the hospital without believing that I came back alive. I recounted to them my experience. That day more than 15 people among doctors, nurses and employees who worked in that hospital accepted Jesus. I was discharged. I knew that I would be arrested when I left there. I bent my knees. I realized that a black shadow came out of my heart. I repented of all the evil I had done. I know that I cannot arrange the families that I made cry, nor make those lives come back. I was arrested. I won many souls in that prison. I was released with the help of some doctors who converted with my testimony. We built a recovery house for alcoholics and drug addicts. These houses have taken many addicts from the street and converted many. In this house they learn the word of God, learn to pray and take courses to integrate into society and have a decent job. This house has partnered with vocational schools. I know that I cannot build the damage that I did in life, but I can do what is within my reach. I know it's the least I can do, according to my conditions, but it is from the heart. I ask forgiveness to all the families that I have harmed. Perhaps I will not receive your pardons, but I will pray for you. While you who are in the world of perdition as I have been, accept Jesus. He is merciful. He is God. It does not matter if you are a murderer, no matter what your sin is. If you are a prostitute, a homosexual, a lesbian, he wants to forgive you. Do not resist that call. I went to a place where I belonged, suffering, but it seemed an eternity. There in hell, there is no count of hours because there is only night. There is no count of time. Today is your day to escape from hell, do not want to go there and stay all over eternity. You who will accept Jesus, say with me, Heavenly Father, I come to the Lord in an attitude of repentance. 
I ask you to forgive every sin I have committed, those of which I am aware and those of which I am not aware. I repent of them all. Write my name in the book of life and erase my name from the book of death. Deliver me from eternal damnation, forgive me Jesus for all that I have done. Make me a new child, deliver me from all evil, making me a new creature, amen. A drug pusher experiences hell. I want to relate my testimony.